Welcome to our live learning session, how to use Wirecast Cam, uh, and we should add to that actually Wirecast Go, because uh, I'll be covering both of those apps, and uh, you'll find out why in just a minute. So if you're not familiar with Wirecast uh, Go and Wirecast Cam, um, they are free mobile apps for your iOS device, so iPad, iPhone, and so forth. You can download them or find them on the Apple Store, and uh, they come in, uh, they, they're they basically the Go app, they have sort of two different functions. Now, we will be combining those functions so that you will only need to use one camera, one camera app for Wirecast, so um, you should definitely stay tuned for, for when that comes. Um, but in the meantime, let's just talk about what they do and how they work independently of each other. So first, let's start with Wirecast Go. And I'm going to, in order to do that, let's talk about, um, we'll go to my, my, my iPad app here. So my iPad screen. So you can see what I see while we're talking about these apps. So let's just cut to that. So here you go. Here's an iPad. Um, and you can see a bunch of different apps on here. Right here in the corner, the lower right corner, you can see the two apps, Wirecast Cam and Wirecast Go. And uh, let's just talk about Wirecast Cam first. So I'm going to open that. Wirecast Cam is a uh, basically a LAN cam app. So what it does is it allows you to stream your uh, from on your local Wi-Fi network, um, whatever your iOS device's camera can do. And there's a lot of different settings. It really depends on what your cameras are. This is an older iPad, so it doesn't have the nicest cameras available right now. Um, but you can see you can change your resolution. You can even change things like your frame interval. Uh, how often you send keyframes. This can really affect how often the, the encoder or how hard uh, the encoder is working on the machine and then how sort of far apart total keyframe refreshes are. Um, so there's some real control over that, which is cool. You can also control the bit rates and your quality settings. So if you have a really nice Wi-Fi network, you can really stream uh, you know, 6,000 kilobits per second across your network, depending on the device. And those will adjust depending on what you select. So if we jump down to, say, a standard definition, you, know, you can see that the bit rate will give you lower options here. So instead of going all the way up to 6,000, there's no reason to stream a 640 stream at you know, 6,000 kilobits per second. So you see you have 2,000 and below. So let's jump back up to our resolution. And then um, you can also, uh, you've got other things like this. So you have ability to turn on or off audio. And you even have the local IP address in the corner. Um, and so this is going to be what you plug in to Wirecast. And I will see if I can give you an example of that. Um, let's just go, let's just jump this down to 720. And keyframe every two seconds is fine, 2,500. Ooh, let's jump that to, say, 2,000. All right, so, um, and this Wi-Fi, you just need to make sure you're on the same Wi-Fi network as your computer. So there's, you can see me on the screen. I'm sorry, this is kind of shaky. Maybe um, if Deverly has a second, you can put me on the screen, so at least while I'm talking here. There we go. So this, um, what you're going to do is you want to go into Wirecast when you're adding a Wirecast cam shot, and you want to select Wirecast cam from the list. So this is for Wirecast 7, um, and any of, uh, and I think Wirecast 6 also has the Wirecast cam functionality. But if you're on Wirecast 6, or and I think it's like 6.0.1 or later, you should see Wirecast Cam as an option. So select Wirecast Cam as a shot, and you're just adding this as a source. And they should, they can auto-discover if your network's very straightforward. Um, and I already actually have a different one right here, which I'll talk about. This is on my, um, my, my phone, which is plugged into a gimbal, which I'll talk about in just a second. Uh, and then... You can also just plug in that IP address, which you'll which we'll find on the device. So it's 10.0.6. Actually, what I'll do, let's just start streaming here. 10.0.6.140. Now this um, might connect or might not. I think I'm on a different subnet, so um, I might need to just use my phone, which because this 
iPad. I actually don't know what Wi-Fi it's on right now. But make sure that you are streaming on the iPhone. So definitely, we can cut right back to the iPhone just real or the iPad real quick. I just want to show what that looks like. In order for this app to connect, you need to make sure that this red dot, which kind of looks like a big record button, is a square because that means you're streaming. And then you can see kind of in the upper left corner, barely, it's giving you the fact that it's streaming. It gives you a bit rate. It tells you basically that it's in the act currently of streaming across the network. So I'm just going to switch there so you can see me. So this right up in the corner, you can see is, is uh, should be streaming and lets you know that it's streaming. Now, as long as it's streaming now, it's sending information over your, lot, your LAN, now when you plug in the IP address and you hit connect, they should find each other. So just keep that in mind if um, you know they do that. And I'm not sure this one is going to find it because, uh, again, I think that subdomain is a little different than the one I'm actually on for the laptop uh, for the Mac but um, so that's pretty much the process you want to make sure you are streaming and you're on the same network and they should be able to find each other and to give you an example of that I'm gonna jump up here and just select the existing one and I'm going to pull this up I'm gonna pull up Wirecast cam here all right so let's go to Wirecast cam and just make sure that we're streaming here all right so if this I did this right there we go so now we're coming in live from my wirecast cam over the Wi-Fi network with my phone okay and you can you want me to hold this up you can see I'm actually holding this on a DGI um, gimbal DGI Pro okay so um, this is really important. Actually, this might be a good time to talk about gimbals. So uh, if you are just holding your phone, you're going to get a ton of shake. It's not going to look good. You have two options at this point. If you need to be mobile, a gimbal is really the only way to go. And what is a gimbal? It's something that holds the phone steady even as you're walking, talking, or shaking. So if I get up here um, and I just follow myself with the app, you can see that it's like I have a cameraman and I'm moving around. It's super sort of steady. It's probably a little weird. I'm going to wander off the screen here at the bottom here. So you can see that it, even though I'm turning in 360 degrees, it's really um, stable. And I can, uh, as long as I keep myself centered or framed, uh, the gimbal takes care of all the smoothness. So it's almost like I have my own little personal steady cam. My arm will get tired after a while. So I can sort of tuck it in maybe and sort of keep. Uh, my elbow propped on my chest, sort of like this. You can kind of be your own. Uh, let's walk into the frame here. Oh, I guess she took, oh, there we go. So if you keep your, your elbow sort of tucked on your, your, your chest like that, you can really save yourself some, and you can kind of, if you want to even be your own like tripod, you can hold both hands like that. So it really depends on how long you're streaming and what your plan is for that. But just keep that in mind. There's some tips and tricks. But a gimbal, um, you can see the advantages of it. Okay, so there's a ton of different ones. This one is a robotic sort of electric gimbal made by DJI, uh, and I think it's about $300. And you can even, it has some cool controls. Uh, there's, um, there's a, uh, you can even get a camera that comes with it. DJI makes another app that does that stuff. So highly recommend that. And you can see the advantages of Wirecast Cam on your Wi-Fi network, all right? Make sense? So that's Wirecast Cam. Now I'm going to jump back to my iPad and I'm going to talk about, um, let's just sit down while we're talking about this. I'm going to jump back to my iPad and I'm going to talk about Wirecast Go. All right, so I'll put that down and we are going to jump to the iPad. Okay, so I'm going to jump out of this Wirecast Cam. Now the next app is Wirecast Go. Wirecast Go is our remote production and camera app. So this really, let's pull this up, this allows you to stream on a cell phone network. And it is, uh, so basically you can stream from anywhere. You do not need Wirecast in order to use this app. You basically have a mini Wirecast here on your app. So you have, you can make different shots. Actually, this, this is the free version, so it's locked. There's a free version and a $6 version. And down at the bottom, you can actually see replay happening. So Wirecast Go can record 
and it can you can even jump back in time if you miss something. You just keep going. So there's the purchase app because I'm using a feature, the, the replay feature, which is sort of a paid version of this. Um, and I'm going to jump back to the, the shot here. And what's cool is you have an almost unlimited number of shots that you can make. And that really consists, so let's just pick the one you want. And it can also do up to three layers. So you can see I can actually stack three different elements on the screen. So that's what's cool about Wirecast Go. And you can do this anywhere. Now, I mentioned at the front that these two apps are actually going to become one app. They will both become Wirecast Go. So look for that update when we release Wirecast Go 2.0. Um, and I don't have a date for you on that, but just keep in mind, at that point, Wirecast Cam, uh, what you do in Wirecast Cam will basically move over to Wirecast Go for the most part. And you, the Wirecast Cam is just going to come in through Wirecast Go. And you're not going to see, there will be some changes as well on how that works. So look for more information on when, when we uh, launch that. But for now, that's what the two apps do, and eventually, Wirecast Cam is going to disappear. You'll just use Wirecast Go for whether you're streaming remotely um, from anywhere or whether you're on the LAN uh, on your local Wi-Fi network. Either one, um, they'll both you know, be in a single app because we don't want it to be too confusing. It's easier just to have one app that does it all than to have to do two different apps. OK, so I hope that makes sense on the two apps. And. The last thing I, I kind of wanted to cover was some of the, the gear that you might need. Now, um, both of the apps are pretty straightforward, pretty simple to use, and you'll they have tutorials, and you can kind of figure out how they work. The, the Cam app is very simple. The Go app has a little tutorial that will teach you how to use it, and you should be up and running with it very quickly. All right, so next, let's talk about gear. I mentioned gimbals, very important uh, if you're doing mobile streaming. Um, other sort of the things you can use are little desktop tripods, right, with a clip. So at least as long as you can, and we talked about with this with Archon, but as long as you can like park it on a, a tripod, then you can just adjust it and leave it sort of steady like that. And um, there's a bunch of different sort of devices for that. Um, and I want to just talk about some of the things like that. So how would you start to trick out your Wirecast Cam or your Wirecast Go app? You'd start to add additional you know, um, gear for it. So you might add a nice like microphone. Or if you want to add, like um, Aaron was saying, you want to add like a mobile clip light. These are pretty cool. They basically, and they come and they actually have different color temperatures. So if you're like in a yellow light or a white light, like daylight, you can see that stuff. So I'm going to just switch over to the white light here because that's what we use in the studio. I'm going to clip this over the camera, actually like that. And it's going to kind of sort of ruin the gimbal's strength here. But um, let's just... Let's make sure we have the strength here. It might not have the strength plus the gimbal light, but we'll see. So you'll need to, you can use something like that, and now you can kind of light yourself as you're talking, and it's using the front camera, and you can see that there's a little bit of a shine. You can see I don't use a ton of makeup here, um, any. And uh, this this is one way to do that. So you're gonna, you have the, the, the clip light that goes on over the phone. Um, there's other gear you can get, which I'm gonna, again, just prop this right here. Uh, let's do it like that. That's yeah, just going to stay down like that. So other gear we you've seen on the show before, we've talked about. The Iographer is a great case manufacturer. And what I love about this is our friend over friends over at Iographer, Dave, and his whole team, they've made um, almost an all-purpose device. You can mount this onto a gimbal or a tripod, and then it's got slots for all of the other additional things you might want to add. And of course, they will sell you a whole kit if you need. They um, will sell you your own sort of light, which can slot right in, so you don't even have to worry about um, the, uh, you don't have to worry about the clip light or not working. You've got handles if you want to grab something. Um, you've also got additional lenses, things like that. You can mount lenses for a little uh, natural zooms rather than having to use the software. Um, so you can mount that on. So let's just screw that in. And I'm going to just take off the cap here. 
And there's they've got macros if you want to do super close-ups. So let's just talk about that. I'm just going to screw this in. Okay, so now I've got um, the ability to do uh, a nice lens, nice macro lens. And there are filters. They also, of course, will sell the Rode microphone. And this Rode microphone came with the iographer kit. And so this will go right in here. And I find these to be fantastic mobile production kits. And uh, Dave Basolta wrote a book on a lot of this stuff. And he, you can, you know, now you see you've got lights, you've got mics, you've got a perfectly good case for your device. This is the iPad mini case, but they make cases for every single device out there, I believe, or at least they focus um, almost exclusively on any Apple devices. And then um, I think they're going to be covering IR, um, Android devices as well. So once you trick out your tablet or your iPhone, then you load up an app like Wirecast Go or Wirecast Cam, and uh, now you've got a fully featured production studio that can go wherever you need to go and do whatever you need it to do. So that is my quick learning session on Wirecast Go and Wirecast Cam, and I hope it was helpful.